If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to see more of our content. And also make sure to ring the bell if you actually want to see our content. Thanks, YouTube. If you really like what you see, you should know that we did this all with a budget of blood, sweat, and tears. So many tears. Just imagine what we can do with an actual budget. Become a patron of ours to find out. You'll gain access to videos up to a day early, alongside other perks. Thanks as always to our rare tier patrons Morello, Chriselle, Nolstring, and Andrew, alongside all of our other patrons. Also, we have a TCG Player affiliate link, and you should definitely start with it whenever you make a purchase there. Doing so will let you support the channel at no additional cost to yourself. Finally, we've been really trying to keep an eye on social media better, so as always, you can find the links to those accounts down in the description. Alright, that's enough self-promotion. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Hey everyone, it's Matt here, and welcome back to another Commander Guys gameplay video. This week's game pairs really well with last week's game, for reasons that you'll see a little bit later on. And although it does get a little grindy, I've done my best to simplify things where I can. So let's not waste any more time, and go ahead and jump in to player introductions. First off we have Spencer, bringing back Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. This is still a mono black deck with a focus on life gain, and despite his win last time, Spencer's looking to do a bit more in the game this go around. He kept Yawgmoth Thran Physician, Apprentice Necromancer, Bastion of Remembrance, Dread Return, a pair of snow-covered swamps, and a regular old swamp. Returning to the channel is Carissa, playing her Cthrill Aspect Warper deck. Cthrill is a commander focused around loading your graveyard with various keyworded creatures, and either reanimating them all at once to go wide, or casting Cthrill to go tall. And Carissa kept Arcane Signet, Stinkweed Imp, Audric Lunark Marshal, Sigarda Host of Herons, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, Godless Shrine, and a Forest. Then comes Josh, playing a bit of a different take on Zur the Enchanter. Josh's build focuses on using Zur as a distraction and a toolbox enabler, as he tries to move towards a non-traditional win condition. Josh kept Smothering Tithe, Aura of Silence, Ashnod's Altar, Lightning Greaves, Chain of Vapor, Arcane Sanctum, and Hallowed Fountain. Last but certainly not least, we have Grayson, playing Sterev Devkarin Lich. Sterev is a Golgari recursion deck, which is looking to deal combat damage with Sterev to return Grayson's spent creatures and planeswalkers to hand. And Grayson kept Avenger of Zendikar, Death Reap Ritual, Liliana of the Dark Realms, Nature's Lore, Temple of Malady, and a pair of swamps. Spencer starts us off. He drops a swamp and passes off. Then Carissa drops a tapped Godless Shrine, Josh drops a tapped Arcane Sanctum, and Grayson drops a tapped Temple of Malady, before leaving the Cardi Scries on top to close out round one. Spencer drops another swamp. He casts Azulaport Cutthroat and passes off once again. Carissa drops a forest. She casts a Fauna Shaman and passes off to Josh. Josh drops a swamp and cast a Lightning Greaves. And then Grayson drops a Karn's Bastion, before casting a Nature's Lore, which he uses to bring in a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Spencer drops a third Swamp. He casts a Bastion of Remembrance, and creates a 1-1 Soldier Token as it enters, before passing turn. Carissa drops a Grim Backwoods. She casts an Arcane Signet, and passes off to Josh again. Josh shocks in a Hallowed Fountain. He casts an Aura of Silence, and then passes turn. Grayson drops a Swamp, and casts Liliana of the Dark Realms. He upticks Liliana, and goes to grab a Swamp to hand, before passing off once again. Spencer drops a Swamp. He casts his Commander Vito, and then passes off again. And at his end step, Carissa activates Fauna Shaman, discarding a Stinkweed Imp, to go and grabs the Talpa to hand. 
Carissa then moves to her upkeep and dredges back Stinkweed Imp in place of her draw, hitting these five cards in the process. She plays in her Borktomb Yawgmoth for turn, before casting Sigarda Host of Herons. And with that, Carissa passes off. Josh drops an Adakar Wastes. He casts his Commander Zur and equips him with Lightning Greaves. Josh then moves to combat and swings Zur at Spencer, and on that attack, he cheats in a Steel of the Godhead, enchanting Zur. Spencer then takes 3 damage as Josh gains 3 life, and then passes off. Grayson drops a Swamp. He upticks Liliana again to grab another Swamp to hand, and then casts a Deathrite Shaman. He follows up with a Cultivate, which he uses to bring in both a Tapped Forest and a Forest to hand, and with nothing else this turn, Grayson passes off. Spencer casts Yawgmoth Thran Physician. He loses a life and sacrifices his human token down to Yawgmoth to give Fauna Shaman a Neg1 Neg1 counter. A bunch of effects trigger, and in response, Josh cracks Aura of Silence to destroy Bastion of Remembrance. As the Bastion is destroyed, Spencer draws his card from Yawgmoth, and then everyone begins to resolve the life triggers, causing each of Spencer's opponents to lose 2 life while he gains 2 life. This life gain also triggers Veto, which Spencer uses to ping Josh twice more. Spencer then sacrifices Zulaport Cutthroat to Yawgmoth to kill Fauna Shaman. Each of his opponents loses a life, while he gains a life, and then once again, Spencer uses Vito's trigger to ping Josh, before drawing his card from Yawgmoth. And despite all of that, Spencer misses a land drop and then passes off. Carissa casts a Stinkweed Imp and misses a land drop as well. Josh drops an island. He casts a Smothering Tithe and then moves to combat. He swings Zur at Liliana and brings in a Mystic Remora on that attack. Liliana then takes 3, and Josh gains 3, before passing off. Grayson draws for turn, and ultimately decides to pay for Smothering Tithe. He drops a Forest, and then casts a Farseek. Grayson doesn't pay for Remora, so Josh draws a card, as Grayson goes to bring in a tapped Swamp. He also shortcuts a bit by upticking Liliana, and while he searches for a Swamp to put to hand, Grayson passes off. Spencer draws and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. He casts a Dark Ritual and follows it up with a Bolus of Citadel before Josh even gets a chance to draw from Mystic Remora. It resolves, and here we go. Spencer plays a Swamp for turn from top deck. He then loses 2 life to Citadel cast Animate Dead, targeting Zulaport Cutthroat on that cast. Grayson responds and exiles the Cutthroat with Deathrite Shaman before gaining 2 life and since Spencer is stuck with the land on top deck, he passes off again. Carissa draws and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe, as she drops a Plains for turn. She casts Audric and then passes off to Josh. Josh pays to keep Mystic Remora on his upkeep. He drops a Command Tower and casts an Enchanted Evening, and now all permanents in play are enchantments in addition to their other types. Josh then moves to combat and swings Zur at Spencer again, we're going to bring in an Authority of the Consuls thanks to Zur's trigger. Spencer then takes 3 more as Josh gains 3 more, and then passes off. Grayson pays for his draw. He drops a Swamp, and upticks Liliana to bring another Swamp to hand. He then casts a Garut Caller of Beasts, and gives Josh another draw from Remora on that cast. Grayson then downticks Garuk and cheats in an Avenger Zendikar as he does so. He creates a total of 901 plants as the Avenger enters, all of which enter tapped, as Josh gains 10 life. And with nothing else this turn, Grayson passes off. Spencer doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. He casts a Grim Tutor with Citadel, and Josh remembers to make his treasure from earlier, before drawing his card from Remora. Spencer then loses 3 more life as he goes to tutor up a card to hand. He casts the Aetherflux Reservoir he tutored up, and Josh misses his draw from Remora, before Chain of Vaporing Bolus a Citadel in response to Aetherflux cast. Citadel is bounced to Spencer's hand, and he declines to sacrifice a land to bounce a permanent. He then drops a Swamp for turn, and casts an Apprentice Necromancer. He gains 3 from Aetherflux on that cast, and uses Vito's trigger to bolt Josh. Finally, Spencer passes off, as Josh remembers the Necromancer entered tapped, and Josh gained a life. Carissa doesn't pay for her draw. 
She casts the Swiftfoot Boots, and Josh draws from Remora on that cast. Unfortunately, Carissa's pretty mana screwed at this point. So with that, she passes off. Josh sacrifices Mystic Remora on his upkeep. He casts a Soul Ring, and then drops an untapped Sea of Clouds for turn. Josh then moves to combat, and swings Zur at Spencer again. And on that attack, he cheats in Grim Guardian, which pings each of his opponents as it enters. Spencer also takes 3 from Zur, as Josh gains 3 life. And with that, Josh passes off. Grayson pays for Smothering Tithe again. He upticks Liliana for another Swamp, before playing it for turn, and that landfall adds a plus one plus one counter to each of his plant tokens. Grayson then upticks Garouk, revealing these five cards. He whiffs with Garouk, and puts all of the revealed cards on the bottom of his library. Grayson then follows up with a Death Reap Ritual, before passing off. Spencer draws for turn, and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe, so Josh creates an enchantment treasure token, and pings each of his opponents as it enters. Spencer then recasts Bolas' Citadel, and gains a life from Aetherflux, while also pinging Grayson with Veto. He then agrees to not affect Josh this turn unless necessary, so that Josh allows Citadel to resolve. And here's where the fun begins? Spencer loses a life to cast Bubbling Muck with Citadel, and he gains two from Aetherflux on that cast, while also hitting Grayson for two with Veto. And as Muck resolves, all lands on board tap for two mana this turn, thanks to Urborg. Spencer then plays a Swamp for turn with Citadel, before paying a life and sacrificing Apprentice Necromancer to Yogmoth to give Deathrite Shaman a Neg 1 Neg 1 counter, and more importantly, draw the Swamp on top of his library. That draw triggers Tithe, and Josh creates a treasure token, which pings his opponents once again. Spencer hits another land on top deck with Citadel, so he casts a Demonic Tutor in the hopes of unsticking himself. He gains 3 on that cast, while also pinging Grayson for 3 more. And in response, Josh casts a Read the Runes, where X is 13. He draws 13 cards, and then discards 13. And still holding priority, Josh flips Demonic Tutor the Bird. Spencer creates a 2-2 Bird as his spell is countered, which enters tapped, as Josh gains a life. This ultimately works for Spencer though, as he activates Yawgmoth again, targeting Deathrite Shaman to try and unstick Citadel. In response to Yawgmoth's activation, Grayson exiles Josh's Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth with Deathrite Shaman to add a mana. He then uses his remaining mana to activate Karn's Bastion and proliferate his board. Yawgmoth's ability then resolves, and Spencer draws a card as Deathrite Shaman dies. Josh creates another treasure on that draw, and pings his opponents once again. Spencer then casts a Grim Harrispex from top deck, and triggers everything again. Before doing the same, with Diabolic Intent, Cryptgast, Death Greeter, and Villis, Broker of Blood. And after the dust settles on all the relevant triggers, the board and life totals look like so. Spencer then loses 7 life to cast Runesguard Demon with Citadel. Villas triggers 7 times, and then Spencer gains 9 from Aetherflux, eliminating Grayson with Veto in the process. Spencer then draws his 7 cards from Veto, which causes Josh to create 7 treasures, which will ultimately trigger Grim Guardian 7 times. And it's around this time, Spencer realizes how big of a problem that actually is. If Spencer didn't have interaction for Grim Guardian's ability, he would end up in a loop, where each time he lost a life from the Guardian, Villis would trigger, forcing him to draw a card. From there, Josh would create another treasure, which would trigger the Guardian once again. To break this potential loop, Spencer sacrifices Villis to Yogmoth, paying a life to give Putrid Imp a Neg 1 Neg 1 counter, and also draw a card. Hey, it's me again! Spencer just missed a draw trigger from Villis. Because of the order of Yawgmoth's activation cost, you pay a life before sacrificing your creature. As such, Villis was on board when Spencer lost a life, and he should have drawn an additional card here. Spencer's draw gives Josh another treasure, and he pings his opponents for a total of 8 damage. Rune's Guard Demon then resolves through, and enters tapped, as Josh gains a life, and Spencer goes to tutor up a card to hand. After tutoring, Spencer remembers his life gained from Death Greeter as Villas died, while also pinging Carissa with Veto for one. Spencer then sacrifices the demon to activate Yawgmoth again, targeting Putrid Imp. In response, Carissa activates Grim Backwoods, sacrificing Putrid Imp to draw a card. Josh creates another treasure, and pings his opponents, as Yawgmoth's ability loses target, and Spencer forgets both of his life gain triggers from Death Greeter. 
He activates Yawgmoth again, sacrificing Cryptgast, and targeting Audric this time. And Spencer gains a life from Death Greeter, pings Carissa with Veto, gives Audric a Neg1 Neg1 counter, draws a card, and finally gives Josh a treasure, which pings each of Josh's opponents. Spencer then casts Golgari Thug with Citadel, which triggers everything again, before immediately being sacrificed to Yawgmoth, which triggers a different set of permanents again. He activates Yawgmoth once again by sacrificing Death Greeter this time, and then misses his life gain from the Greeter before resolving everything else correctly. Next comes a Citadel cast of Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and Spencer gains 11 from Aetherflux, while also eliminating Carissa with Veto in the process. Gary then enters tapped, and Josh gains a life, before Spencer drains Josh for 8, and Veto hits Josh for 8 more. Spencer activates Yawgmoth one last time, targeting Grim Guardian, and in response, Josh casts an Ancient Excavation. He draws 4, before discarding 4, and doesn't hit an answer, so Yawgmoth's ability resolves through, and Spencer's board triggers again. With a land on top deck, and not wanting to sacrifice Vito to try to win with Aetherflux this turn, Spencer bricks on Citadel and discards down at end step, before passing off. Josh untaps. He casts a Grim Tutor, and loses 3 life to tutor up a card to hand. Josh then casts the Arcana Sun's Gracie tutored up, which enters as an enchantment. It triggers itself thanks to Enchanted Evening, and creates an enchantment Pegasus, which in turn triggers the Archon again. This creates an infinite mandatory loop, and normally the game would end in a draw, but with Grim Guardian in play, each time an enchantment enters, Spencer loses a life, ultimately meaning that Spencer is eliminated, and Josh walks away with a win.